Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A very short video today. I want to show you how I go about processing an underexposed image. Now I'm doing this demonstration using Lightroom, but what I'm going to show you will work in any post-processing application. The main challenge you'll encounter when you're trying to process an underexposed image is to be able to process it in such a way that you have a lot of dynamic range in the scene, but you don't have the highlights blown out or the shadows crushed. So you'll have an image like this, it's underexposed, and probably the first thing you're going to do is go to the exposure slider and open that up, move it to the right. And what you'll often find is when you do this right off the bat, you're going to start blowing out the highlights right away and you don't have the shadows opened up enough. So then you'll come in and move highlights and shadows around and try to get a good white and black point. Well, what I found, there's a way that makes this a little more automatic, a little easier. So let me reset the exposure slider. So what I recommend you do when you have an underexposed image such as this, go to the, go to the highlight slider right away and move it down to minus 100. Then go to the shadow slider and move that up to plus 100. Now, it's still underexposed, but I think what you'll find if you go to the exposure slider next, you'll be able to adjust exposure where you're not blowing out the highlights and you're not crushing the shadows. So it's more properly exposed. Then what you could do is get a white and black point next, the way you typically would. Now the way I get a white and black point in Lightroom is I hold the Option key on my Mac while I move those sliders. It's an Alt key on a PC. So I'm holding in my Option key on my Mac, clicking on the white slider, and you can see the entire screen is black. So I'm not blowing out any highlights yet. But I'll move this white slider to the right until I see some color come through. When that color's coming through, I'm starting to clip those channels. I'm blowing out the highlights. So I'll just back that off until all that color disappears. So that, to me, is a perfect white point. Conversely, I'll do the same thing for blacks, but I like to clip the blacks a little bit. I like to give my image uh, some absolute black in it, usually, especially a landscape image. I think it gives my image a lot of tonal range. That's just the way I like to do it. So again, I'll hold in the Option key on my Mac, click on that black slider. You can see I'm already clipping some of the shadows, clipping the green channel, the blue channel. But I'll just move that to the left a little more and even clip it a bit more. That's the way I like to do it. And then I'll kind of eyeball it. Maybe I'll move it a little bit to the right. So now I have a perfectly exposed image. I first adjusted highlights, moving it down to minus 100. I second adjusted shadows, moving that to plus 100. Then I just adjusted the exposure slider and eyeballed it so it looked like it was properly exposed. Then I got a white and black point like I normally would. Now, just proceed with your processing as you normally would. I'll add some clarity and some texture. I like to go down to HSL. I like to go to the luminance tab of the HSL um, tab, and then I'll go to yellow, and I like to make the yellows brighter and the greens darker. Again, I like to try to get more tonal range. Sometimes I'll open oranges up as well. I'll go to blues, I'll bring those down. Then maybe I'll jump back up to basic and I'll add a bit of vibrance. So that's how I go about uh, adjusting an image, processing an image that was underexposed in camera. And again, this process that I'm showing you will work in any post-processing application. So give it a try and let me know in the comments how it works out for you. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.